today we have the lecture number 4 of combinatorial scores and in the last class we were discussing one final uh, problem in pigeonhole principle uh, namely the a problem from Erdos-Sakras so that is what pigeon principle part 4 uh, this statement says that if we have n square plus 1 distinct real numbers there is either an increasing subse subsequence of length n plus 1 or a decreasing subsequence of length n plus 1. So, we can uh, try with small suppose we can take uh, say n equal to 1. So, that is n square plus 1 uh, is equal to 2 here. So, if you take any uh, 2 numbers say 10, 20. So, in whichever way we order them, in whichever way we order them, uh, whichever we, way we order them, uh, so either there are only two ways of ordering it, right? 10, 20. So, or 20, 10. So, in this case, we have an increasing subsequence that this is this itself is a sequence 10, 20, it increases. So, of length here n plus 1 is equal to 2. Similarly, so in this case we have a decreasing uh, subsequence 20, 10 here. So, of length n plus 1 namely 2. So, but uh, n equal to 2 is not a good case because it does not illustrate the point much. So, let us take n equal to sorry n equal to 2. So, that means n square plus 1 equal to 5. You can take any 5 numbers say for instance we will take 1, 7, 9, 16, 12 say 5 numbers. You can order in any ways. So, this I have put in increasing order. So, so we try to what we do is so the claim says there, there is either a subsequence of length n plus 1 which is increasing. Subsequence means you can say for instance if I this is a subsequence say. So, I just cut it off 7, 16, 12 is a subsequence or you can read 1, 7, 9 this is also a subsequence or 1, 16, 12 is a subsequence or 1, 1 itself is a subsequence whatsoever. So, some seek some uh, suppose if you delete some numbers from this uh, list the way we have, we have ordered it, we just keep the order, but we delete certain numbers from it. The remaining thing is a subsequence uh, that is what. So, but what we claim here is if you have n square plus 1 numbers in this case 5 numbers or arrange in any order, arrange in any order, we will get 2 things uh, in an increasing order or in a decreasing order means sorry 2 plus 1. N, n plus 1 here is 2 plus 1, 3 things increasing or decreasing. So, we can try it in various things for instance say, so this one say 1, 7, 9. So, I can I can try to what do I do? I, I see 1, 7, uh, 9, 12. Here this itself is increasing. So, there is nothing big about it. Anyway, in fact, the entire thing is increasing. Let us try to uh, avoid increasing sequences of uh, length 3, right. So, what will happen? Let us see. So, so, we can try to bring it here 9, right, 1, 9, 7, right. So, but then what happens? So, this will go away. So, 1, 9, 7, 16. So, but so, we still have uh, say 7, 16, 12 here uh, or anything 1, 16, 12. So, we can try to bring this 12 and right here say, but uh, we still have 7, 12, 16 here. So, we can try to what will we do? We can try to take this and put it here right say, but then we still have 9, 12, 16, 9, 12, 16. This is an increasing uh, subsequence of uh, 
so now what can I do? I can take 16, maybe this is the problem. So, I will take 16 and put say here. So, now, but the even 1 9 16 is increasing. Say, I will put it, I will put it say here, 16 here and 9 here. So, then what happens? 1, uh, but 1 9 12 is something like that. So, 1, 1 9 12 is an increasing. So, I will put it, put 9 here. 12 is here and 9 here. So, 1 16, so of case nothing can increase from 1 16, 1 12 can nothing can increase now. So, 1 9, but it is only 7 now. So, there is no increasing sequence uh, of length 3 starting from 1 now. Now, let us say look at say can anything start from 16 and increase uh, no, 16 is the biggest number, nothing can increase beyond that. 12, no, because the only biggest number is below that. So, now starting from 9, we have only one number here. So, that is also decreasing in fact. So, we have managed to kill all the increasing subsequences of length 3 in this thing. But then the theorem says, okay, if you have done that, you have surely made a decreasing subsequence of length 3, which is obviously true because you can see the 12, 9, 7 is a decreasing sub 12, 9, 7 or here we have 16, 12, 9 something like that, right. So, this is not this extremes are uh, you cannot avoid it is what is as long as there are sufficiently large numbers in this case uh, n square plus 1 numbers, right. So, n can be anything n can be 100, right. n square plus 1 would mean 100 into 100 plus 1, right, 10,001. If they have uh, ten, if you have ten thousand and one numbers, and if you arrange in arrange them in any order, they are distinct numbers, right? So now nothing is equal to each other. And uh, if you try to avoid an increasing subsequence of length hundred plus one in it, hundred and one in it, right? That means you make sure that the biggest increasing subsequence you can get from the ordering, right? is only uh, 100, but then you are sure to have a decreasing subsequence of length 101 is what it says. So, one of these things or the other way suppose if you avoid all decreasing subsequences of length 101, so that means you make sure that every subsequence if you count, uh, count I mean you, you have in this thing is only maximum 100, then we will definitely have an increasing subsequence of length 101 is what it says. Right. So, therefore, uh, this is uh, this is unavoidable, this is unavoidable one of the configurations, one of the things should happen, we cannot avoid uh, getting um, one of these two things. How, why does it happen and uh, what is what is the proof for this? So, he, here we have a very simple uh, pigeonhole principle argument for this thing, uh, um, this is the way we do it. So, um, what do we do? We consider we have uh, n square plus 1 numbers here, right? And these things are so we are n is greater than or equal to 1 positive integer. Uh, now, uh, we consider any ordering, suppose somebody claims that it does not have an increasing subsequence of length. Uh, n plus 1, neither uh, it have, it has a decreasing subsequence of length n plus 1. Suppose somebody managed to create it, we will produce a contradiction by pigeonhole principle. So, suppose this is that ordering say a 1, a 2, a 3, this is a n square plus 1 are the numbers the way we see it in this uh, ordering, right. So, so called good ordering, right. Now, what we can see is, so we go here a 1 and see what is the largest increasing sequence ending at it. So, that will be definitely 1 because there is nothing coming from here. So, therefore, this, this should be just a single increasing sequence. Right? So, if you want some numbers, certain numbers for instance, if I write 10, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, uh, say 6, 4, sorry, 4 is a repetition, right, 100, right. 
Now, if I ask then what is the biggest longest increase in sequence ending at 10 here. So, definitely this is uh, just one because there is nothing be before it. So, this the longest increasing sequence will be I will mark it with thing right here just one. Now, on the other hand I can see which is the largest decreasing sequence starting with 10 uh, that will be for instance 10 2. So, nothing is decreasing from here 2 no uh, they, you can go further no 10 3 no that is also length 2. So, I can start with 10 then say what about uh, next thing being 4 10 4 no nothing is decreasing here also. But then if I had taken 10 as the first 8 as the second 8 as the second one then see 9 is not possible 6 you can take right 10 8 6 this is a 3 length decreasing sequence you have a longer decreasing sequence. But if you had gone 10 9 6 that is also equally good. So, 3 length decreasing sequence you can get nothing better you can get. So, a decreasing sequence uh, you can get here 3 right a 3 length decreasing sequence you can get for this thing. Now, with 2 if you ask what is the biggest increasing sequence. So, it is again 1 because you know nothing if you start with 10 it is a decreasing sequence for this thing it is not increasing till 2. So, the biggest increasing sequence ending with 2 is just one length and the biggest decreasing sequence ending with 2 is also 1 right because 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 if you start with 2 nothing is decreasing here with 3 here you will get 2 because you know 2 3 this is a increasing subsequence right 2 to 3 is increasing. So, on the other hand uh, if you look for the decreasing sequences here. So, see starting from 3 uh, nothing is decreasing here right it is just 1 right. it is just 1 because 3 4 it is only increasing 3 8 it is only increasing 3 9 it is increasing 3 6 it is increasing. So, no with starting with 4 you see that the biggest increasing is 2 3 4 you have this much 2 3 4 that means you can write 3 here there is an increasing sequence of length 3 starting here. But here we have uh, 4 no nothing is decreasing. So, it is just 1 starting with uh, 4 there is only a 1 length decreasing sequence, but with 8 uh, the thing is uh, like with 8 we will get 2 3 4 8 here it is 4, but starting with 8 we have 8 if you go to 9 it is increasing 8 6 so length 2 length decreasing sequence here 8 6 2 length decreasing sequence here. So, 8 6 ok like this. Uh, now, with 9 we have again 2 3 4 8 9 there are there is a 5 length increasing sequence ending at uh, 9, but uh, for decreasing sequence it is again 2 because 9 6 right. With uh, 100 uh, with 6 we have 2 3 4 and then 6 that is a uh, 4 length increasing sequence decreasing sequence is just 1 starting with 6 only 1 decreasing sequence is there. With 100 we can take the biggest here right 9 that is 5 2 3 4 9, 8 9 and then 100 that is 6 here 6 here right. Then uh, here we have only 1 right because with starting with 100 there is just that 100 there is nothing decreases beyond that. So, we get a certain collection of numbers here above it above the numbers which are written uh, in red color here. So, red color here right um, indicates the biggest the longest in increasing sequence which ends at that number starting from uh, left of it and then ending at the number right. So, and uh, the the letters the, the numbers which we have written below this, this below the below uh, using blue color it in it indicates the longest decreasing sequence that you can get starting with that number towards right right towards right. So, this is the numbers for instance here this is to illustrate this thing look at 9 9 the longest uh, increasing sequence which ends at it is uh, of length 5 for instance you can start with 2 2 3 4 8 9 this is a long 5 length sequence which is ending at 9. But on the other hand the longest decreasing sequence starting uh, from 9 is only 9 6 nothing more right. 
So, that is all. Now, what we do is we make a table like this. Uh, table is like this, right. So, see here of case I just uh, illustrated uh, what these numbers are, I mean what we are looking for using a uh, some sequence of numbers, right. But so our uh, the person who claimed that there exists that the Roche Sekaras theorem which you are trying to prove now is wrong. That means, he can come up with a sequence uh, uh, for n square plus 1 distinct real numbers such that there is no increasing sequence of length n or no increasing dec uh, decreasing sequence of sorry of length n plus 1 and no decreasing sequence of length n plus 1. Uh, so, suppose he has written this numbers like this, this is the A sequence. See, this is the, 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 the actual sequence we have written here 10, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 6, 10, 100 is not a good example because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers here. So, we should have taken, so to illustrate n square plus 1, uh, we should have taken a correct, um, uh, correct number. So, so this n is only 2 here right, 2 square plus 1, it is already bigger than 5. So, we do not look at this stuff, this was just to illustrate uh, a point that we are trying to consider certain kind of numbers. But here, uh, whatever we did here, we can con we can do here also. So, some number k 1 we will write here, some number k 1 dash we will write here, some k 2 we will write here, some k 2 dash we will write here like that. This k 2 will indicate the, the biggest uh, the longest increasing sequence which is ending at A2 and this K2 dash will indicate the longest decreasing sequence which starts from A2, right. Now, what we are going to do is to create a table like this. What does this table uh, signify? This table signifies, see here the length of the longest increasing sequence, sequence so is ending at a number ending at a number, this is what we are going to mark here, right. So, this so here um, these, these numbers we will write, because you know these numbers on the horizontal axis, this I will write it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This corresponds to uh, up to where it can go n because up to n because you know we are saying that uh, there are uh, no increasing subsequence of uh, length n plus 1 here. So, here uh, we will for instance he, he, he this is like this 1, 2, 3 up to n. So, we will for instance uh, in the i j th this is i. So, this is i and this is say j. So, we can put maybe 3, 4. In this square here, we will if we if we start identify this square. So, we will write a number a j here, a j here if the longest increasing sequence ending at a j uh, coming from the left hand ending at a j is 4 and uh, the longest decreasing sequence starting at a j and going towards right ok. So, that is 3, right. So, that means, what we are going to do is in these squares, we are going to place the numbers, the numbers say a 1, a 2 up to we have a n square plus 1, n square plus 1 numbers are there. These numbers we are going to place in these squares. So, a particular number a i will be taken and then we will look at what was written above it, remember. So, in this the previous thing we were writing the a number above it and number below it, right. This above number we will find and uh, we will corresponding uh, column we will find out. 
that means this is the first column second column third column corresponding column we will find out in that column we, uh, and then we will look at the number which was written below so this for instance is 4 this 3 1 we will 4 will be written in 3 1 see 4 will be written in 3 1 here we will write 4 here right for instance this uh, uh, 9 9 was 5 2 5 above and 2 here right uh, 9 will be written in 5 2 here here 9 will be written. like that each of this a 1 a 2 a n square plus 1 will be written on this uh, squares right uh, its column number will correspond to the longest increasing sequence ended the length of the longest in the increasing sequence ended at that number and uh, the row number will correspond to uh, the the length of the largest longest uh, decreasing sequence starting from there right that way because we have two numbers corresponding to uh, each ai each ai in the sequence each number in the sequence so we can find out a square for that right each each one go will go into one square here but the point is that because we know that there is no subsequence increasing subsequence of length more than n n is the biggest so this this numbers are only 1 2 3 the number of columns are only n similarly here we have only n uh, yeah we have only n rows also right so the all the numbers should occupy one of these n square n into n n square columns right so there are n uh, rows here n columns here how many squares are formed like that because any column uh, should be in one of the column any square should be in one of the columns there are n possible columns and each column can contain n squares so n into n this is called product rule so by this applying this product rule so we can see that there are n square uh, squares only so these numbers should occupy n square but then there are n square plus one numbers so considering these as pigeons right this a i says pigeons and these squares uh, where it has to go are the holes these squares are the holes here right these are the holes now there are n square holes and n square plus one pigeon so two pigeons should occupy the same column that means there should be some number a i and some number a j let us say without loss of generality j is greater than in that ordering so this starting from a 1 a 2 like this so a i and then a j so until a n square plus one right which occupied the same uh, square which occupied the same square means uh, say maybe this a i yeah both this a i and a j came here in this column that means the number which was written above it in that sequence was also same maybe here 4 and the below it uh, was also the same for both a i and a j right so um, so here for instance we had marked a number here some k i was marked here some k i dash was marked here this corresponds to the longest uh, uh, increasing sequence starting from here and ending at a i and this corresponded to the k dash corresponded to the longest uh, uh, decreasing subsequence which is starting from a i and going towards this thing right longest sub -decreasing same number will come for a j also this k j and k j dash right corresponding to the longest subsequence uh, which is uh, going towards this and uh, sorry uh, longest subsequence increasing subsequence which ending at a j and this will correspond to the length of the longest decreasing subsequence going towards this and starting with a j right so we are saying that this a i and a j occupy the same column that means k i should be equal to k j let me just write k for both of them k for both of them right let me just write k for both of them and then here this should be same because they are the lower numbers are also same that is why they went to the same uh, square right let me write just k dash for this both, both those things, right so there is a problem here so, but then a i a j they are different numbers suppose a a i this a j was bigger than a i 
this aj was bigger than this thing then there is a contradiction in the sense that if you count the say the number of uh, elements uh, in the biggest increasing sequence up to here ai so that was k now with that increasing sequence you can put aj also after ai in that increasing sequence we can put aj also we will get uh, one increasing sequence ending at aj with at least k plus 1 elements in it so how can it be k so this was wrong so that means so that means this was uh, definitely like this uh, this was like this that means ai should be correct then here there is a problem because the meaning of this number is that the longest decreasing sequence starting from aj so it's something like aj here i identified a number like this like this it goes there were k dash k dash numbers starting with aj and uh, decreasing towards this right the longest one but here ai also says it's the same for it also k dash numbers starting from ai but then ai could have been attached uh, just before uh, the Uh, longest uh, decreasing sequence some starting from aj right this sequence aj this one we could have started from here ai aj and these things that would have given this k dash here it should have got k dash plus 1 because this itself is k dash so we should get one more here right but we we say that these are equal these two are equal so that's a contradiction right so it is not possible for uh, uh two pigeons to occupy the same hall is what we have seen because either this has to be greater in which case one of these two things have to be different uh, if they are same then uh, uh, that means it was the opposite th this was bigger right now one of these two things have to be same it would be different it's not possible for this pair and this pair to be same if this both the pairs were same then only we can uh, uh, put both this ai and aj is in the same hall namely same square there in the previous picture right uh, like this right so but then that is bound to happen if there are only n square uh, if there are n square pigeons here n square numbers distinct numbers here and the halls are only n square right n square plus one. so very nice application of pigeon hall principle here so what can we infer from that there is something wrong in assuming that there are only this many halls so that means either here we should have in this horizontal uh, this thing that means the number of columns should be at n plus 1 or more or the number of rows should be uh, n plus 1 or more number of rows should be uh, number of rows should be n plus 1 or more right n plus 1 or more so that is what we can so number of columns uh, being more than n, n that means n plus 1 or more means that we should have uh so we should allow the number of increasing sequences to take values from uh, 1 to n plus 1 not just um, yeah 1 to n plus 1 right 1 to n plus 1 possible values it has to allow right it not just n right if the biggest increasing subsequence was only n then here you can only have n possible values right but that's wrong so we should have n plus 1 Uh, possible values that means there should be one increasing subsequence uh, with the uh, n plus 1 elements in it similarly the number of uh, if that is not true the number of decreasing subsequences right which are marked in the uh, rows right that should have n plus 1 possibilities that means there should be a decreasing subsequence subsequence of length n plus 1 this is what it says now if you carefully look at uh, this uh statements so we can uh, see that uh, uh here we don't we can slightly change the statement namely yeah instead of n and n we can use r and s here suppose we have see earlier we told n square plus 1 distinct real numbers now we let's say r into s plus 1 distinct real numbers then there is either an increasing subsequence of length r plus 1 or a decreasing subsequence of length s plus 1 it's a generalization we don't have to say n and n uh, so that symmetry can be broken right that's what it says so that uh, proof is same because we will do all the same uh, thing suppose such a sequence uh, of 
real so the, these are the real numbers suppose you got a sequence which doesn't satisfy this properly property that means uh, a r s plus 1 numbers are written such that uh, there is no increasing subsequence of length r plus 1 and there is no decreasing subsequence of length s plus 1 right no in that case we can show a contradiction by again writing say some number here, some number here, some number here, some number here like this. So, what does it mean? The upper numbers, the numbers what we write here indicates for instance for a typical uh, a i, uh, the number we write here uh, this k i indicates the longest uh, increasing subsequence that ends here up to here. So, if you the biggest one we take right. Similarly, uh, the number we write here k i dash, this will indicate the longest decreasing subsequence which ends here, right. Now, we again uh, draw that, uh, uh, well now this time a rectangular grid we uh, draw and here this columns will correspond to the, uh, the numbers which we are writing here. So, if we do not have any r plus 1 length increasing subsequence, it is very clear that this can be 1, 2, up to r only if they do not we, we do not have s plus 1 length decreasing subsequence clear that it is 1 to up to s only right. The total number of squares possible will be r into s this number right number of squares will be only r into s right. But we know that there are r into s plus 1 numbers distinct numbers here. So, these being the pigeons and these being the halls these being the halls right the number of halls is 1 less than the number of pigeons. So, 2 pigeons should be occupying one of the halls wherever it is maybe it is this right maybe it is this here right. Some a i and uh, some a i and some a j has occupied the same hall here right. That means, both of them got the uh, same pair of numbers above and below it right. So, here above numbers are same below numbers are same right. So, then we saw we saw that if we because those numbers are distinct either a j is greater than a i or a i is greater than a j. In both cases there is a contradiction either from above or below right. So, that we have seen because you know uh, we can if if we assume that it is about if it is above if we assume that uh, up to here uh, the longest increasing sequence was this number then because a j was if a j is bigger than that we can add. Uh, aj also to that increasing sequence we can get one more. So, that the, the assumption that the increasing sequences length of the longest increasing subsequence ending at ai and aj are same is wrong because aj being bigger than ai can be added. That means, aj is smaller. So, aj is smaller than in which case we will get a contradiction from the lower part right. The longest uh, decreasing subsequence uh, starting from a i will be one more than the longest uh, at least one more than the longest uh, subsequence starting from a j. So, so that this way we can generalize it and uh, now we will see one more uh, generalization of uh, this uh, theorem for to partial orders. So, the partial order is also a notion uh, you sh I assume you should know before coming to this class. So, I am I advise you to go through the chapter in Grimaldi and Ramana on uh, say where they introduce relations pa partial orders and things. Uh, so, this so th there will be some uh, lot of examples there you can just have a look at it or any other discrete maths books the first chapters will introduce relations and uh, so th there they will talk about partial orders right. So, I am uh, I am assuming that you are to some extent familiar with it not uh, like just the notion is um, uh, this thing, but still uh, to um, uh, I will just remind you what it was partial order. The partial order means so there are certain objects now. Uh, we have a relation on these objects means say we let us draw these objects here these are as by using points let me this thing. When I say that there is a relation I will put an arrow between them. So, typically this is a 1, a 2, a 
थ्री ए फोर ए फाइव ए सिक्स ए सेवन ए एट सो दिस एरो मीन्स दिस ए टू कोमा ए एट बिलोंग टू अवर रिलेशन राइट एंड द कैंड ऑफ रिलेशन वी आर इंट्रस्ट इन इज Uh, when they satisfy three properties one is they should be reflexive when i say reflexive reflexive uh, that means i for each of them i have this kind of arrows that means uh, so for everything we have this kind of arrows okay that means we have uh, all the pairs of the form a a in r a comma a and now the relation is anti symmetric anti symmetric so when i say uh, relation is symmetric we mean that suppose there is a relation here that means this this arrow is there that means a2 a8 is the uh, belongs to the relation then a8 a2 this also should be there a8 this would imply this would imply that a8 comma a2 also belongs to r this is what is symmetric uh, this is what we mean by uh, stating that a relation is symmetric anti symmetric means this is never true I means for the relation to be symmetric this should be true whenever there is an arrow from to this thing that reverse arrow should be there that means whenever there is a pair a comma b b comma a sh also should be there anti symmetry says uh, if like if a is related to b then b will never be related to a a and b so in case we get uh, a comma b uh, is r and b comma a both are in the relation then that would mean a equal to b only in the case of this that means a and b being same then only we have that pair right ab and ba together right so in other words when we draw this graph diagram so here for instance uh, this will never be there for now for instance we we are clear that it's only we will put this edges always one direction will be there maybe this thing not both right whenever between two points we have drawn here when we draw an arrow here uh, so the arrow may not be there because that but if at all arrow is there then there will be only one direction it's not that both uh, both ways we can put the arrows right so uh, that is anti symmetry and the third thing is something called uh, transitivity the relation is transitive what do we mean by relation is transitive it means if ab element of the relation ab is in the relation and bc is also in the relation and then ac also then that should imply that ac also is in the relation so it's in that diagram form it would be much easier to see suppose we have this belongs to the relation right and this also belongs to the relation so a b c then this should be there in the relation that's what it claims claims and asks for that is uh, that is when if for every such uh, uh, situation that ab belongs to this and bc belongs we also have this one then we will say it is a transitive relation right partial order has this three properties uh, a relation is called a partial order when we have uh, when the relation is reflexive anti symmetric and uh, transitive right so remember we will call it an equivalence relation when instead of anti symmetry we have symmetry okay instead of this thing we have symmetry right so that, that's a sl slight difference right for example we can see that uh, if you take natural numbers uh, say 1 2 3 so the set of natural numbers we can this just define a relation in this thing by so i say i comma j belongs to r if i strictly less than j right the order the natural order which uh, we have on the natural that's the relation right so you know by that order by that relation every pair is related 
will say that every pair is comparable right so if you give take any a and b right so we can say like this uh, sorry less than equal to right any a and b even when a equal to b so we have a relation a less than equal to b or b less than equal to a never both it is reflexive because a is less than equal to a it is anti symmetric because if a not equal to b and if a less than b then we can never have b less than a also only one of these two things will be true right anti symmetric and transitivity is very clear because if a less than equal to b and b less than equal to c then that would mean a less than c right so therefore this uh, natural order that we have in the natural numbers or real numbers that is a partial order actually it's a total order because uh, the a partial order is called a to total order when every pair is comparable between every pair there is uh, that relation is valid either a, less, uh, a and b are related a b a comma b belongs to the relation or b comma a belongs to it's never true that both neith neither a comma b nor b comma a belongs to the relation right such a relation is called uh, such a relation is called partial order now uh, so okay for instance this was a total order in the what we consider now the example because but uh, non trivial example can be obtained suppose if you take the natural numbers say 1 2 3 this is a set of natural numbers 1 2 3 4 5. here we can uh, define a relation by say a comma b belongs to the relation if a divides b that means this a is a factor of b for instance 5 comma 10 would belong to our relation because 5 divides 10 or 2 comma 88 will belong to our relation because 2 divides 88 right so now uh, here we can um, see that uh, this is a partial order so let me for instance for some numbers i can i can write it one one will be a divisor of everything right so we can we have these arrows for everything and two will be a divisor of all uh, even numbers so all 4 5 sorry 4 6 8 like this we can we, if we draw it and of course we cannot draw everything so um, and uh, so okay so, so to this also of course here it will be to this also right so now this is the way the partial order will see of course so we can check whether it's a uh, reflexive anti symmetric transitive relation is very easy to do because a divides a so the, the reflexivity is coming so if a divides b that means b is a bigger number than a if and assuming that a not equal to b okay then b does not divide a right and uh, the for that there is an anti symmetry there is anti symmetry here either either a, a divides b or b divides a not never both right it's possible that neither a divides b or b divides a but if a divides b then b cannot divide a right that is anti symmetry and the transitivity is also apparent because if a divides b and b divides c c has a has to divide c also right so this is uh, another push this is here definitely this is not a total order because there are many pairs which uh, are not comparable for instance if we take 3 2 3, 2 neither 3 divides 2 nor 2 2 divides c this is that means this is not in r this is also not in r right such pairs are here therefore uh, definitely uh, here in this case we cannot say that this is a total order right i just gave another example where uh, partial order need not be total order right so we can uh, other several other uh, most important example is set system so for instance you can take n that means 1 2 3 up to n and then uh, you can consider all subsets so 2 to the power n subsets of um, we have already mentioned that there are 2 to the power n subsets Uh, available for this set this n element set right now because there is phi there is the full set itself and then uh, yeah there are so many of them so for, to remind you and now we can have a relation defined like this 
so a comma b a is one subset of this thing b is another subset of this thing this belongs to r if a is a subset of subset equal to b right so here also we can see that it's a it's it's a partial order because reflexity is easily checked because a is a subset of a for any subset a and if a is a subset of b and b not equal to a then b cannot be a subset of a because b is bigger now right cardinality wise bigger so anti-symmetry is true and similarly it's very easy to see that if a is a subset of b and b is a subset of c then a has to be a subset of c right so therefore transitivity is also true here this is another thing here also we can see that uh, this is not a total order because we can easily find uh, pairs uh, of subsets of the form a comma b such that neither a is a subset of b nor b is a subset of uh, a for instance we can consider this 1 comma 2 and say 2 comma 3 so 1 comma 2 is not a subset of 2 comma 3 no, nor is 2 comma 3 a subset of 1 comma 3 so they are incomparable elements so therefore uh, since all pairs are not comparable so we say that this is not a total order this, but it is a partial order right all partial orders need not be total orders that is what we told now coming back to our question we give a theorem from Dilworth uh, the theorem is this in any partial order on a set p of n greater than equal to s into r plus 1 elements there exists a chain of length s plus 1 or an anti chain of length r plus 1 so your partial order now whatever partial order i talked about initially that natural number they have uh, infinite uh, number of elements so and similarly uh, the second one the division partial order so, the, so di, di, uh, one is a divisor of other there also I consider the entire na natural numbers as the elements of the partial order the third one was uh, an n element set the subsets were the members of the partial order so that was only 2 to the power n that was finite the finite number of elements uh, only were there uh, in that partial order right uh, so here we consider a partial order on a set where the number of elements is greater than equal to s into r plus 1 s and r are two positive natural numbers say uh, at least s r plus 1 elements then it says there exists a chain of length s plus 1 or an anti chain of length r plus 1 then what is a chain in a partial order a chain means uh, a chain means uh, it correspond to an increasing subsequence in our for instance in the natural order corresponding to the this thing any increasing subsequence is a chain right if you so for for instance you can say uh, here 1 2 uh, 10 8 sorry 10 18 uh, 20 this is a chain because it's like this you can you can put the relation like this right so so always the relation is four in the division partial order for instance uh, 5 10 uh, 100 right 200 then 1000 right this is a chain because 5 divides 10 10 divides 100 100 divides 200 200 divides 1000 and so on right a chain means some members of the partial order so we can let us say arrange it in this way right a k in set such a way that this is related to this this is related to this this is related to this and so on this is called a chain and uh, we can talk of longest chains here right we starting from some element ending at one element something like that right so it, it makes sense right if the pa partial order is finite definitely it makes sense right and uh, now the anti chain anti chain means a collection of elements which are pairwise incomparable for instance we say that this three elements form an anti chain and a1 is not related to a2 a2 is not related to a3 and neither a3 is related to a1 for instance in the division 
uh, relations and in divisor relation we considered in the partial order defined by a divides b. So, you can take uh, this 2, 3, 5 for instance. 2 does not divide 3, 3 does not divide 2, these are incomparable. Similarly, 3 and 5 are incomparable. Similarly, 2 and 5 are incomparable. So, these 2, 3, 5, they do not have any connection between each other, right? Any connection between each other, any, any relation between each other, right? So, for instance, if you take uh, the set of prime numbers, they will form an anti chain because no prime number will divide another prime number. So, uh, that is what, right? So, if you want to look at the graph form, for instance, the initially we drew uh, this kind of a graph to represent the partial order saying that for a every pair uh, which is in the relation, we can put a directed edge. Then an anti chain will correspond to an independent set, right, something like, so for see, uh, something, uh, something like this, right, there will not be between any pair this yellow things there won't be any connection so forget about direction no no connect no edge itself will not be there right they are not comparable right that's anti chain chain will correspond to what here that is interesting thing to think about so of case it will correspond to a direct path more than that it will correspond to a complete graph here which uh, the uh, student can think about right why it's it is now the Coming back to our problem, so the statement says, suppose the partial order, the number of elements in the partial order is at least r into s plus 1, r s plus 1, right, r into s plus 1. Then either we have a chain of length r plus 1. And if you do not actually, we, if you do not have any chain of length r plus 1, meaning all possible chains are of, of length r only, then we are sure to have an anti chain of length, length means cardinality s plus 1. How, how is it true? So, this is the way to look at it. So, we can consider each element like almost the same way we considered uh, the proof of error sucker slightly because now we, we cannot, we are not talking about a total order, but we are talking about a partial order, right. So, for instance, we can take an element a1 and then ask which is the longest uh, chain ending at a1. You know, because we are assuming for contradiction that there is no chain of length r plus 1, that means the biggest chain has to be r. So, whatever it is, the biggest chain ending at it is a1 has to be. Uh, of length uh, at most r. It should be some number that length should be a number uh, 1 or 2 up to r, right. It cannot be 0 because at least a1 itself is there. So, it can be 2, it can be 3, up to r it can be. So, now for each element we can calculate and so for instance, so these are the members a1, a2, a uh, r s plus 1 are the members of the partial order. For each of these members, I can write that number above it, say, namely, uh, this is the biggest, uh, longest chain which ends at a1, right, up to a1, this is the biggest chain, biggest possible chain. So, some number k1 will be written here, some k2 will be there, some krs plus 1 will be written here. Note that each ki is in between 1 and r. So, r possible values of r there. So, now these a1, a2, a r plus plus 1, this will consider these are the pigeons, these are the pigeons, we have r s plus 1 pigeons and the holes are these possible values that k i can take, that means 1 to r, there are holes here. r holes and r s plus 1 pigeons. So, we can apply our generalized pigeon hole principle here. So, r s plus 1 pigeons and r holes then that means they should be at least one hall in which uh, s plus 1 or more pigeons are occupied. So, the one hall which is occupied by s plus 1 or more pigeons because all the halls were occupied by at most s pigeons only since there are only r halls, r into s pigeons only will be there, but we have r s plus 1 pigeons, 
right. So, now this s plus 1 pigeons we claim that this s plus 1 pigeons they correspond to some numbers right a, uh, a i 1 a i 2 say a i s plus 1 ok. So, this pigeons should have a property that means they uh, the property is that they are they form an anti chain uh, that this is what we are trying to tell there will be s plus 1 sized anti chain is what we want to prove. But why is this an anti chain? This is because an, uh, is an anti chain suppose this some a i 1 and a i 2 we take from this thing this s things sorry this uh, uh, this they all claim that the longest chain which ends at them is of length r. Now, suppose there was a relation between this and this suppose there was a relation between this and this that means this was related to this this uh, a i 1 comma a i 2 was in the relation that means in our graph diagram if you could put an arrow here suppose for contradiction. Then the chain which ends at a 1 we could have extended to a longer chain which such that it ends at a 2 right this we will read out this chain reach a 1 and then read out a 2 that will be a bigger chain at a 2. Then how can this a i 1 and a i 2 have the same uh, length for the chains the longest chains ending at them this should be one more right one more at least can be one more. So, that is a contradiction. So, this edge cannot be there that is what we are saying this edge cannot be there this edge cannot be there right. So, therefore, any pair if you take they cannot have an edge between them. So, because if uh, there is an edge one of them uh, is related to the other I mean there is an arrow from one to the other in the graph diagram for instance then uh, we can extend the chain ending at the former uh, with uh, the latter getting a bigger chain for that that will contradict the the assumption here for instance from here what we are getting is all of them are in the same hole hole correspond to one number that number correspond to the uh, the length of the biggest chain longest chain which ends at them right and they have to be different but then here they are same they are in same hole right same same length it has to be so therefore uh, if we put an edge between them they have to be different so that that means we cannot put an edge between them so we infer that uh, there is an anti chain of length s plus 1. So, the contradiction came because of an assumption that there is no chain of length r plus 1 or more the biggest chain was of length r right that is uh, that means either we have a length a chain of length r plus 1 in the thing or we have an anti chain of length r plus s plus 1 in this. So, with this this was the last uh, problem we wanted to consider in the pigeon hole thing but though we took several lectures for pigeon Hall principle, but we, along with this thing, we introduced a uh, uh, lot of concepts like we introduced a little bit of graph theory and uh, we talked about partial order, we talked about uh, some properties of numbers, right. So, so that that is uh, that is an initial thing we uh, we spend on several things, but you are supposed to uh, read these topics uh, in more detail from. Uh, at the beginning first chapters of Grimaldi and Ramana or some one of those other discrete maths books you are following in your university right. So, whichever book is ok. So, just be familiar and comfortable with this terminology what is a relation, what is an equivalence relation, what is a partial order, uh, what are the main things about graphs like degrees, edges. So, like independent sets some preliminary notions about graphs and then even this what is a permutation such notions you should be aware. So, we will meet in the next class.